2012 was unmatched for Sandag in the region in terms of accomplishments. The list of successes includes operating a toll road, acquiring environmental mitigation properties, embarking on a new regional planning effort, and starting and completing a variety of construction projects. Through 2012, Sandag continued to make great progress planning, engineering, and developing Transnet early action projects. To finance this robust capital program, we returned to the market during the spring to issue new fixed rate tax exempt bonds and to refinance some of our prior variable rate debt. The agency's strong fiscal stewardship did not go unnoticed by credit rating agencies. In April, Standard & Poor's reaffirmed the Sandag AAA rating, while Moody's assigned a rating of AA2 to the agency's senior lien bonds. Let's take a look at how Transnet funds helped complete one vital link last year. Well, 2012 was the, uh, the opening of 905. It actually, uh, now we can, you can go from 805 all the way to the border on a freeway. There's no stop lights to stop. The, it's a smoother ride. It's three lanes in each direction. That was a great accomplishment. Uh, and I'm sure if you speak to the trucking industry, they're very happy to see it occur. It was challenging getting here, several years to get it done. But in 2012, when we opened uh, traffic in July, it was great. The project is six miles from the 805-905 interchange to the uh, port of entry at Old Time Mesa. There's uh, three lanes in each direction. There's interchanges at Caliente, uh, Britannia, and La Media. In the future, there will be an interchange at uh, Heritage Road. Um, there's six structures, uh, the biggest being uh, Spring Canyon. Um, and then in the future, we'll also have a, a freeway to freeway interchange at uh, 125. This project was constructed using a design sequencing which is a method where the plants are not 100% completed. Uh, they're maybe 60, 70% completed. We go out to bid and the contractor be begins work and then we submit the rest of the plants. Uh, so that kind of helped our schedule. We were able to put the project out to construction a, a little bit sooner. We started in 2007 and we completed the main freeway in January 2013. It's been very beneficial. Um, we cut the, the travel time between 8.05 and the uh, port of entry by about 20, 25 minutes already. So it's really been helpful. It used to take maybe uh, on a good day, uh, 40, 45 minutes to get from 8.05 to, uh, to the port of entry. Now it's taking maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So it's great. While the 905 wrapped up, on the other end of the spectrum, the North Coast Corridor Program is in its infancy. Well, North Coast Corridors, 27-mile transportation corridor, starting in the city of San Diego at La Jolla Village and running all the way to the north of uh, the northern end of Oceanside. And the great thing about the corridor is it's, it's an attempt to holistically look at transportation, both from a freeway perspective, a rail perspective, as well as from a coastal access perspective and look at rail and pedestrian. And I think where we're standing today really shows the importance of the corridor, how there are very limited opportunities, and, and I-5 and the rail line really are the economic lifeline of the county. The challenge we have is how to improve transportation in the, in the county and in this corridor, but do so in a responsible way that actually can provide enhancements to our coastal resources. 2011 we uh, selected the preferred alternative um, which was the smallest footprint, express lanes only, and so now as we moved into 2012 we needed to look at more of the engineering and the planning details on how do we make that work. And some of the things that we looked at was uh, the lagoons, how can we possibly lengthen the bridges at the lagoons in order to make the lagoons flow better and improve their health. The results of that was in the fall of 2012, we put out supplemental draft environmental document, and that really details a lot of the improvements that we can make in the corridor. Um, looking forward into 2013, we're going to take that, uh, that environmental uh, document, as well as the comments that the public have made, and finalize the, uh, both the federal and the state environmental document and make our final submittal to Coastal uh, Commission in order to get our coastal permit. And that's really one of the unique things about the corridor, um, the way we're going to permit the project. Um, we're developing what's called the Public Works Plan, and that is both a blueprint for both the rail and the highway and the coastal access improvements, 
for 40 years. Uh, it's a six and a half billion dollar investment, but also it's going to be the regulatory, it's going to be the permitting vehicle. And that ultimately is going to streamline the permitting process for us because it's one permit for the entire program. Um, so very unique approach. Um, and, and 2013, really, we, we, kicked that, we kicked that process off. Uh, we've been uh, wrapping up construction in the middle of 2013. We'll be finished with construction of the Carroll Canyon improvements on 805. And really, that's the last piece of an 11-mile segment of carpool lanes. In addition, we have a number of de uh, improvements under the, on the design process. One of those that we're particularly proud of is the I-5 Genesee interchange improvements. Genesee improves uh, access directly to the university, the region's hospitals, as well as a number of key businesses, SAIC, Qualcomm, etc. We hope to break ground on that by uh, middle or fall of 2013. So we've got a number of exciting things going on. And we don't want to sacrifice what it means to be a San Diegan. And what you see here is what it means to be a San Diegan. And so we think we can actually leave the corridor better um, than what it is today, not just from a transportation perspective, but from a community perspective, coastal perspective. And so this really is exciting because this is, again, what it means to be a San Diego. A key component of the North Coast Corridor program is rail improvements. The Amtrak coaster and freight traffic that is uh, carried in this corridor, it it's, uh, really helps to improve transportation in San Diego County. The board is going to invest about $3 billion over the next 40 years to essentially double track the corridor. It's half double track now and we're going to go to about 100% double tracking. We'll be replacing uh, bridges and improving stations and doing other track work along the way. 2012 we completed three projects. We completed the uh, Trestles Bridge replacement up in uh, uh, near the Orange County line. That was uh, an old timber trestle that we replaced with a concrete uh, trestle. And we also completed uh, about two miles of double tracking in collaboration with uh, Amtrak in the Carlsbad areas, two miles of double tracking. And we completed about another thousand feet, over a thousand feet of uh, bluff stabilization in our Delmar Bluffs 3 project. And also in 2012, we have about seven other projects that are um, uh, under construction. Uh, we're under construction, uh, projects in Encinitas, uh, Sereno Valley, and uh, not near uh, Washington Street down in, uh, in San Diego. In addition, we've been uh, continuing our work on a very major project, the uh, uh, Santa Margarita Bridge Replacement Project up in Camp Pendleton. To date in the program, we have um, completed about $100 million of work uh, in environmental engineering and construction and we have about another fifty million dollars that's uh, under contract so we're really making a lot of headway one of the important things that we do in cooperation with some of our other partners in the corridor caltrans in particular is uh, our environmental work in the lagoons uh... is is very critical and so uh, there are the six lagoons in the in the corridor and so for example on the san alejo lagoon we're working very closely with caltrans so that both their work and our work can go forward in the lagoon at the same time. I just really enjoy being able to see uh, work uh, like this accomplished because it really provides for the betterment of all of us and something you can look back on in your career and in your life and you say, wow, that was, that was really great to be involved in that. Let's take a close look at one of the rail projects that's just about to open the Encinitas Rail Undercrossing. We're putting in the first of four uh, planned pedestrian crossings here in the city of Encinitas, uh, right here at Santa Fe Drive and Highway 101 near Swamis. And, uh, you know, we've been under construction since early January. We anticipate finishing this project sometime early 2013. And what this project will do is it's going to pro provide um, a safe access for pedestrians and for uh, bicyclists and, and surfers and anybody who wants to get from the east side of the tracks over to the west side of the tracks where you know they have recreational areas, businesses and restaurants as well. Building the bridge was obviously a major challenge for us on this project. We had very limited work window in which to get this bridge installed. Uh, we had to 
see service, railroad service, and bus passengers around the project site while we uh, put the bridge into place. Uh, it involved us having to continuously work around the clock uh, for 52 hours straight in order for us to be able to put in the bridge while uh, there wasn't any service here. This particular pedestrian crossing has a, a, lot, a number of unique elements. Uh, you know, it's not a cookie cutter type of a crossing. I mean, it has a number of different architectural enhancements, you know, both in the walkways that, you, that we're on and in, in addition to that, the retaining walls too. And then we have monuments with cobblestones that are going to be placed around it that will add some additional correlation with some of the other monuments the city has in place in town. So at the end of the day, I think this is going to be a project that you know the community, the city, North County Transit and Sandic can all be very proud of, you know, both in the way it looks and in, in the way it will function. Since we're at the beach, let's talk about the Regional Beach Sand Project. It placed 1.5 million cubic yards of sand on eight area beaches from Imperial Beach to Oceanside between September and December of last year. The project kicked off in Imperial Beach and then headed north. The future of the San Diego region is currently guided by two primary long-range planning documents, the Regional Comprehensive Plan adopted in 2004 and the 2050 Regional Transportation Plan Sustainable Community Strategy adopted in 2011. In May of last year, the SANDAG Board of Directors approved merging the updates for these two plans. The consolidation will give citizens a single, easily accessible document that includes an overall vision for the San Diego region and an implementation program to make that vision a reality. A new addition to the regional plan will be the operation of the SR-125 toll road, which SANDAG assumed control of last year. It opened a new frontier. Well, 2012 represented the first full year where SANDAG started operations of the tolling facility on State Route 125. It's an exciting new proposition that our board took a bold step in working to do something that's never been done in the United States before, where we're actually going to buy a toll road and plan to reduce tolls to provide public benefit and not focus on how much money we can make. The adventure that Sandag is going on here is that next bold frontier in transportation. To boldly go where no We're going where no other board has gone before. What is that? The flight is on. Condition yellow. Since June 30, when the tolls were reduced, usage has been great. There's been huge support by the public. Our ridership is out the roof way beyond what we expected and we just hope it continues as we go forward. We've learned a lot, you know, in addition to sand ag working with beach sand, we're also learning to deal with rattlesnakes, gophers, moles, and coyotes who come through the facility but never pay their toll. <laughs> now the sand ag owns its first tunnel. We're close to the Mexican border, but not that close. We've got a new building. This is a beautiful building at the south end of the facility that we are working to maintain. And that's where our customers come to interact with us. So those things are new as well. We'd like to invite all our board members to come down, get a fast track transponder, use the road, or if they choose to, they can pay cash. We can always use the money to help pay off the debt a little sooner. That would be great. So we'd like to invite you all to come down, visit us down here at Sandag South and use the toll road. Our other toll facility, the I-15 Express Lanes, continues to be a success. In January, the full length of the Express Lanes between San Diego and Escondido opened to traffic, cutting travel time for commuters in the corridor. The Express Lanes won the Project of the Year Award from the California Transportation Foundation in May of 2012. More improvements are coming with the scheduled launch of a new bus rapid transit system in 2014. The new service will run more often than the existing MTS Premium Express Bus and offered increased reliability and customer convenience similar to rail services. 
I-15 corridor, there are seven bus rapid transit stations planned. One in Escondido, here at Del Lago, Rancho Bernardo, Sabre Springs, Mira Mesa, and the final two stations are in the median in the mid-city areas at University Avenue and El Cajon Boulevard. In 2012, the two big things we accomplished was issuing a contract to enhance both the Del Lago Transit Station, which we have here, and the Rancho Bernardo Station. Right now, we're finishing up construction at RB and Del Lago. And basically what we're doing is we're enhancing the bus staging area to include new BRT branded shelters, next bus signs, security cameras, lighting. Each station will have a total of eight bus bays uh, for the increased frequency that we plan for BRT service along I-15. Uh, these stations should be completely done by mid-February or the beginning of March with all the enhancements. In February 2011, I went to the uh, Sandag transportation community to ask that, that they adopt uh, a resolution that Sandag could go into their first design build procurement process, and that was adopted. After a lot of dialogue between Supervisor Roberts and myself, he ended up saying, this is going to be a great project and you're going to save a boatload of money. So hopefully we're going to save a boatload of money and we should get it done ahead of schedule. In October 2012, we issued a notice to proceed for Sandag's first design build procurement contract, and that's for the Sabre Spring Station. And that station is going to have 630 parking spaces, a four level parking structure, and enhanced bus staging area. The parking structure will include uh, electric vehicle charging stations, photovoltaic system, and also a mod modular bike parking facility. It's a sense of accomplishment to get this thing done. All the engineers at Sandag basically marry themselves to the job from design through construction. So this is kind of like my baby uh, from cradle to grave. And so we take great pride in seeing this thing designed and constructed. Meanwhile, the number of carpools which use the I-15 express lanes for free is at an all-time high. So is the number of solo drivers enrolled in the Fast Track program. The total number of Fast Track transponders in use has topped 25,900. The number of carpoolers has exceeded 23,500 daily. During 2012, the I-15 Fast Track program generated more than $5.2 million in toll revenue. Funding ongoing operating costs and providing about a million dollars a year to support MTS premium express bus service in the corridor. Sandeg and its partners are also working on improving the connectors to I-15. If you hadn't already heard, SR-78 leading up to the 15 is the most congested highway in the region. Improvements started on this very busy highway with the recent widening of the Nordahl Bridge. In 2012, we were able to reconstruct the Nordal Bridge, uh, actually build a wider bridge than the original one, wider, taller, and uh, that is making a, a, a tremendous difference in the traffic across 78 in this part of, uh, of the county. Uh, what's special about the bridge on Nordal Road over 78 is how quick it was able to be built. By building the temporary pedestrian bridges, we were able to reduce the number of stages. We also used that design using precast girders. Uh, these girders are over 100 feet long, and uh, instead of having to cast them in place, they were built uh, somewhere else and they were shipped and installed very quickly. That allowed to uh, shorten the construction window to build this bridge. We were able to uh, get the bridge completed and open to traffic right before the shopping uh, holiday season. Say, go ahead, unwrap the present here. Let's it off. There, there we go. There we go. Yeah. That was a great time for uh, everybody that participated really in the construction and the design and the planning of this project to come together in a celebration uh, about the opening of the bridge. This bridge got torn down and replaced within 10 months under budget and under schedule. Yay! We needed to improve the absolute worst traffic congested area in the county in the afternoon commute. In September, Governor Brown signed Senate Bill 1549 into law. 
It provides Sandag with new project delivery tools to expedite the construction of public transit projects in the San Diego region. Sandag plans to use one of these tools, known as Construction Manager, General Contractor, or CMGC, to deliver the Midcoast Corridor Trolley Extension. We accomplished a lot in 2012 for the Midcoast project. Our draft Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement, subsequent Environmental Impact Report is going to be released early this year and our number one focus was to refine those designs. In the Mission Bay area, we were looking at refining the design of additional parking required uh, to support the demand that we anticipate at the Tecolote Station, the Claremont Drive Station, and the Balboa Avenue Station. We also will work very closely with the Veterans Administration Facility in the development of that station to make sure that the pedestrian circulation to, from the trolley, the platform station we propose within the Caltrans right-of-way has direct access to the front of the VA hospital. We've been working very closely with UCSD also on the alignment that goes through Pepper Canyon. A lot of uh, other areas of coordination included uh, under State Route 52 and working with the resource agencies we have now been able to come up with a design that maintains an open channel configuration and also accommodates the low sand corridor uh, improvement needs for a double track system as well as a light rail. We have been doing an extensive effort on public outreach to get the word out of, of, of the project. We've been coordinating with some of the planning groups. That information will be presented in the environmental document, the draft environmental document. And that will afford the project the first opportunity to see all the refinements that we have done from the previous environmental work that was prepared on the Midcoast project and updated to the current locally preferred alternative that we'll be presenting. That includes 11 miles of an extension of the corridor through the Midcoast corridor and eventually providing the University City area with another alternative mode of transportation. So this is new ground for this area. We should have approval of the environmental documents by the end of the year and hopefully a record of decision rendered early in the following year of 2014. We're uh, standing in between Scripps Hospital, Thornton Hospital, and Preuss School. The trolley system will be an aerial guideway in this general area. We'll cross near the Voigt Drive Bridge and uh, come around the corner here, cross back over Voigt Drive, coming over and providing uh, access to a station right behind us at this parking lot. Th this project will provide the folks from in the University City with the opportunity to have a one-seat ride from the border all the way up to the end line here at the Westfield Shopping Center at UTC. It, it would also provide access to the UCSD campus, both the west and east side areas, and then, uh, also um, provide access, direct access to VA station and, uh, and link the Claremont communities with the University City area. We're one step closer in bringing this project to reality for the University City with all their efforts completed in 2012. When completed, Midcoast will become part of a very extensive trolley system that started undergoing a major facelift last year. The project has become quite a construction dance. I call it Beethoven's movement for trains and trucks and equipment. Should be an orange line coming through in about three minutes. How far up the street is it? Block away. How is the trolley going to come and like how are they fast enough to know like when the trolley is going to come? We did it at the Santa Fe Depot. We couldn't clear them out of the station. That was the way the system worked down there. No one else knew it, but we were calling it the Dipsy Door. And I'd say, okay, let's just do a dipsy doodle. And then sure enough, we'd start everybody moving and boom, it worked real smooth. You know, like the dancers, like when the trolley comes, they just like move. They're, they're doing everything quickly. But they're like, they have to wait and then come back on the track. <laughs> it's a very complex operation. We're very fortunate to have some very skilled workers on this job. Nothing happens very easily out here. We can't make an omelet without breaking an egg, and we've broken our, our share of eggs out here, but we haven't ruined the omelet. 
so. <laughs> We're on a time frame. They really want to get this work done as quickly as we can. But the number one thing is the pedestrian safety and the trolley. So, you, I mean, you can't just fly at it. You've really got to have the planning. Hold on a second. We got a train coming through. They make it look easy because of what we're doing here. But it, it can as easily go wrong if you got a bunch of people out here that weren't working off the same page. I'm very happy with, with the way the project is progressing and the work is turning out. There's a couple of times when I go out to the stations that are nearing completion or some of that are complete and I have to actually stand back and re recall what it was like before we started construction to what it is today and that's that smell the roses moment. I'm very happy. To know that the folks here will have a, a lot better platform to use, more modern, the low floor trolley be able to be used. It's a worthwhile project. It's that ballet I was talking about. You dance back and forth. Think you can't get much done in two weeks? Well, in just 15 days, approximately 292,000 cubic yards of new sand were delivered on more than 3,900 feet of beach in Oceanside. In 2012, we continued to acquire properties under the Transnet Environmental Mitigation Program, or EMP. To date, the EMP has funded the purchase of 23 properties, totaling more than 3,300 acres of sensitive habitat around the region. This meets more than two-thirds of the mitigation needs for all projects in the 2050 Regional Transportation Plan. Hidden Valley comprises one of the most important acquisitions to date. Well, welcome to Hidden Valley. It's 1,905 acres in size. It connects up the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Wildlife Refuge to the east here. This property is the missing gap that connects the refuge up with the state-owned property called Rancho Hamul. And that property has endangered habitat species for all kinds of grasslands and all kinds of endangered birds. This property itself was bought by Sandag in 2012 as that missing link or that missing piece and allows wildlife to move so they don't have to cross any roads or any housing. We were able to, to share the cost of the $20 million purchase price, split it in half. Half of it went to Sandag, the other half went to the Department of Interior and allowed us to leverage our funding. And kind of a unique aspect of all this was the Nature Conservancy. They're a nonprofit organization and they actually helped to facilitate the deal by working with the landowner who had development potential throughout this entire valley as we're looking through here. They were able to lower the purchase price by Sand for Sandag and Department of Interior and allowed us to get more land for less cost. Yeah, as we come through here, one of the things I really get worried about is snakes. Because snakes are all over the place and I think that was something in there. Um, I'm gonna go this way. Keep my feet above. No snakes, no snakes, no snakes, no bunnies. Okay. All right, done. Is that good? Hidden Valley is a big piece of property, and Sandag's portion of that went to mitigate or offset impacts associated with regional transportation projects, impacts associated with 94 or 15, and local streets and roads. We have purchased other property in 2012 uh, doing the similar kind of acquisitions. So on I-5, uh, next I-5, we purchased property of five acres overlooking the lagoon at San Alejo. On SR-76, we purchased 60 acres of old agricultural fields, which will restore to native habitat. And down in South Bay area, in Otay Mesa, we purchased an additional five acres of flat habitat that contained vernal pools, and we'll be restoring and enhancing those areas. 
In 2012, we worked with the U.S. Geological Survey to look at what type of animals and where are they crossing underneath our, our freeway systems and under local streets and roads. And what we found out was these undercrossings, these culverts and bridges, aren't just being used by larger wildlife, such as deer and coyote, but also by much smaller wildlife, mice and snakes and lizards. There's many different types of animals that are using these structures that we're building up these two areas. Connectivity is important to keep both the movement of animals back and forth, but also to keep the populations healthy. I'm looking for a gnat catcher. But it's like the time of year, they're very quiet. As they're getting ready to make their nests, they don't advertise too much. I mean, this is where you'd find them. So in the last four years, we've learned a lot on the environmental mitigation program. As we go forward into this next year, we have a lot of opportunities coming up, especially with our coastal lagoons associated with the North Coast Corridor. And we're going to be applying what we've learned in the past to our future acquisitions and our future opportunities. SR-76, which starts at I-5 and links to the I-15 and SR-79, is a vital transportation corridor for North County inland communities. The 76 project is being constructed in three segments. 2012 was a great year for us. What we were able to do was take this segment, this five miles of segment, um, known as Stay Route 76 Middle Segment, which runs from, uh, excuse me, from Melrose Drive all the way uh, easterly to South Mission Road. What we're doing there is we were widening from two to four lanes for this conventional highway. Um, improving sight and stopping distance by realigning um, some of our curves out there, uh, widening our shoulders, getting standard shoulders out there for bikes, peds, and emergency parking as needed. This was a three-year construction project that we were able to get open to traffic the end of last year. So October, November of 2012, we opened this four-lane facility. We were also able to incorporate several environmental enhancements in the corridor. Some of those project features include bio-strips or bio-swales to naturally uh, filter the water as it comes off the roadway before it enters the San Luis Rey River uh, Valley here. Uh, we also included um, features such as the wild animal undercrossings and directional fencing. So as part of that, um, we're trying to reduce roadkill, providing uh, fencing, keeping those animals away from the roadway, giving them direction of sorts to cross at key points under uh, the highway. So kind of keep keeping those habitat areas connected and safe for those critters out here. The EMP was a huge component of this corridor. Um, and with its improvements all along the San Luis Rey River Valley. Uh, the EMP brought with it an $80 million budget um, for the 76 corridor. And what we were able to do with those dollars is acquire nearly 1,600 acres of property. And we were able to acquire that in advance of the impacts, uh, in advance of the construction uh, that we're doing to middle and east segments. Um, it was a comprehensive, systematic approach, so we could uh, essentially string those properties together, allowing for a, a better flow um, of that, those, the wildlife and the continuity of the habitat in the area. We refer to it as the string of pearls. Providing choices for residents of the region is key to Sandag. Aside from building roads, Sandag plays a critical role in promoting alternative transportation choices, such as taking transit and carpooling. The Sandag iCommute program cuts traffic congestion during rush hour. It also reduces greenhouse gas emissions and ultimately commuter frustration. During 2012, iCommute had great success. They assisted nearly 5,700 daily riders in more than 726 van pools. They attracted more than 7,200 participants for the 2012 Bike to Work Day. They registered 68 schools in school pool and reached approximately 200 employers and participated in about 130 outreach and education events. The 2012 benefits of this program in the region 
included reducing 128 million vehicle miles traveled, saving 5.5 million gallons of gasoline, saving $21 million in fuel, and reducing 111 million pounds of greenhouse gas emissions. And if biking was your favorite way to get around in iCommute, you should know that a new section of the Bayshore Bikeway was completed in 2012. Well, the big news from, for the Bayshore Bikeway in 2012 was the opening of this bike path here in Chula Vista, all the way from Palomar Street up to H Street. So this is the first time we've really been able to, to bring a Class 1 bike facility over to this side of the bay. The bike path has been in existence on the west side for a long time, but now we're bringing it up through Chula Vista and, and on into National City and, and towards downtown. So this is a big deal for us because now we're connecting this into the more residential and employment parts of, of San Diego. The north end of this bike path is right at UTC Aerospace, so we're connecting to employers. So the value we've had for this bike path all along as a great recreational facility is now being enhanced because it's also going to be a, a really great commuter facility for, for San Diegans. We're continuing to work on building the bike path all the way to downtown San Diego uh, through our Bayshore Bikeway Working Group and we're in design in National City and on up towards the 32nd Street Naval Station so there's another great employment site where we're going to uh, be able to serve with the bike path. We've been working with the folks along the working waterfront and the Navy and the Port District uh, to get this thing built all the way to downtown San Diego so we can close this loop which is a pledge that our Bayshore Bikeway Working Group has made to one of its members, Gordy Shields. I don't know if you know this but we've built a bridge across the Sweetwater River that's named for Gordy because he was one of the original members of the Bayshore Bikeway Steering Committee way back in 1976. And uh, we've, we've told him we're going to build this bike path while he's still alive. And so we've got a challenge ahead of us because Gordy's 94. The good news is he's an avid bike rider. He's a national champion in his age group. And we're counting on him to continue his great bicycling so that he'll be around for a few more years so we can finish this bike path up in the next five or so years. In March, we opened up this bike path in Chula Vista with our leader of our working group, Supervisor Cox, Mayor Cox from Chula Vista, and some of our other working group members. And so we had about 150 or so cyclists show up and had a nice event down here uh, right at this site. And I always get a lot of compliments from the cycling communities. So happy to see that we're completing more work like this around the region. It's a great recreational amenity, but really, uh, as we're building the bike path up the east side of the bay, it's also going to be a great um, commuter facility. And we know that if we can build more bike facilities like this, we're going to attract more people onto bikes. And that's going to help us reduce traffic, improve our air quality, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. It's uh, really going to be a, a great benefit to us, both uh, recreationally and for public health, as well as economically. Come on out and ride the Bayshore Bikeway. It's 24 miles all the way around. You get to visit all five cities around San Diego Bay and have a ferry ride at the end of your trip as well. SANDAG entered into a memorandum of understanding with the California High Speed Rail Authority and our transportation counterparts in the Inland Empire, Los Angeles, and Orange Counties. The MOU provides the mechanism for the High Speed Rail Authority to invest up to $1 billion in the Low Sand Coastal Rail Corridor and other Southern California rail systems. These early investments are intended to improve the speed of existing regional rail services and provide greater connectivity with a future high speed train system. Back in the fast lane as we know it today, I-805 is one of the main backbones of mobility in this region's urban core. Let's take a look at the work completed on both the North and South 805. The 805 South project is an 11 mile stretch of 805 that goes from Palomar uh, Street all the way to uh, State Route uh, 15. On the 805 Southern portion of the project, on last summer we broke ground on a project to construct two HOV lanes, uh, one in each direction from East Palomar all the way to 94. The project is about about $100 million worth of construction. It's funded by the Transnet sales tax measure and also by the Proposition 1B that was approved by the voters in 2006. There's over 200,000 vehicles going on the stretch of highway every day. Uh, in addition to also a lot of goods movement coming from the border and going towards uh, the northern part of California, 
Uh, so uh, there's a lot of congestion in this stretch of the, of the 805 and uh, this project is going to make a difference and it's also going to provide some alternative modes of transportation it, as it will lay the groundwork for the start of a bus rapid transit system in the future that will start at the Otay border, will use this stretch of 805 and will go into downtown San Diego. It's on the 805 North, uh, there's a lot of congestion every day, uh, a lot of commuter traffic and there's also a lot of good goods movement. So on the North, uh, we are also going to be adding some express lanes Initially, they're going to be available for carpoolers, van pullers, um, for free. And uh, in the future, we will be adding a tolling component very similar to what we have on I-15. Initially, it's going to be just one HOV lane from State Route 52 over to Miramesa Boulevard. Uh, ultimately, we will be adding an additional two lanes for a total of four. It feels good when we reach out to people and we let them know what the project is about. We get a lot of compliments and a, lo a lot of people are looking forward to seeing it open. Sandag provides free energy assessments and management plans, or energy roadmaps, to our member agencies to help them save money and meet environmental goals. Each energy roadmap provides a framework for a local government to reduce energy use in municipal operations and in the community. During 2012, Sandag completed energy roadmaps for 10 cities, Chula Vista, Coronado, Encinitas, Escondido, Imperial Beach, National City, Oceanside, Santee, San Marcos, and Vista. Roadmaps are underway for the remaining jurisdictions. The Energy Roadmap Program is a collaboration between Sandag and San Diego Gas and Electric. Let's head back out to the beach. Carlsbad North and South received sand as part of the beach replenishment program as well. Residents and tourists now have 358,000 cubic yards of new sand to enjoy. As 2012 wrapped up, Sandag received a gift thanks to Assembly Bill 1572. At the stroke of midnight, the agency became the operator of the agency's freeway call box program. Sandag worked with the San Diego Service Authority for Freeway Emergencies, or SD SAFE, the former program administrator to ensure a seamless transition. To maximize efficiency, Sandag will operate the call box system in coordination with the Freeway Service Patrol, which is another motorist aid program. FSP drivers help stranded motorists get back on the road with a gallon of gas, a jump start, or water for the radiator. They'll even change a flat tire. FSP assisted 50,000 motorists for free last year and recently launched a pilot program to add weekend service along the major interstates. 2012. It was an amazing year thanks to an amazing board.